In this attitude guidance scenario, we're going to make the spacecraft be in orbit around the Earth, and then we can use hill pointing instead of the simple inertial 3D pointing. So here with hill pointing, the hill frame has the first axis with the orbit radial, second one with the long track, and then the third one with the orbit normal. That's kind of the hill or the CW. H or the LVLH frame it has many different names. I'm just calling it hill frame. So the attitude guidance has to actually put out an attitude reference state that is this hill frame. And as we go through an orbit, this hill frame will you know, vary with time. To do that, it actually needs to know where is the spacecraft. So we're not just connecting the attitude estimate from simple nav to our attitude tracking error. We're also getting our position estimate now, our position ephemeris essentially, and attaching it to the hill point. And um, we will also need to know from the gravity effector, where are we if we have a location? And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. But that's the idea. So this will be instead of just making it stabilize and point inertially fixed as we orbit around the planet, we're actually going to have it, as it goes around the planet, it will keep rotating and line itself up with respect to that hill frame. So how do we do that? Let's look at the code. Single process, single task. 10 minute simulation, 10 hertz integration, same as many other attitude simulations. I set up a spacecraft, I set up the gravity factory and make Earth. Um, I add all the gravity bodies to the spacecraft. I set up initial conditions with some non-zero attitude and some rate. So it actually has some motion. So it needs to stabilize this with an external force torque. I create the external force torque. And um, the simple nav module, and now instead of inertial 3D, I'm going to do the hill pointing one. That's one that's slightly different from earlier ones. And again, it puts out an attitude reference state. And um, so I'm creating the module, it's a C module. And the translation of the spacecraft, I need to have as an input, that's a required input message. So this one in, I'm subscribing to the, S, the simple nav trans out message. So that makes that connection. There is another one. So there is this attitude guidance has an optional input message called cell body in message. Here you can subscribe the planet about which the spacecraft is orbiting. You describe that planet's ephemeris states. So if that planet is the origin, then you don't actually have to connect this message because by default, if it's not connected, it's just going to assume the planet you're orbiting is at zero, zero, zero with zero speed. And that's where it stays. But if you're using SPICE to simulate Sun and the Earth and the Moon and Mars, Earth is not at the origin. Earth is 149 million kilometers away from the Sun. But we want to compute our position relative to the Earth. So we need to now connect the Earth's message. Here, we're not using SPICE. We're just using um, Earth at the origin. So I didn't have to do these three lines that you see here. Um, I've done them just as an illustration. You can create, for example, this ephemeris payload message if you want to set, if you specified Earth not to be at the origin, but somewhere else. Um, here, I'm just creating a zeroed version because that's what I'm doing with Create Earth, in the Gravity Factory. I'm writing that message into a standalone celestial body input message. It has to, for flight software, it has to be an ephemeris message payload. And then I'm connecting this optional input message. So again, if you have some weird issues with hill pointing where it's not point at the right stuff, make sure that you have connected this optional input message. Otherwise, weird things can happen. The rest of it is straightforward. We add it to the task so it gets executed into the proper sequence. And um, then the rest happens here. If you did use SPICE as an example, when you subscribe to this, you could go to the gravfactory.spice. There's a vector of output messages. Let me just search for that one. SPICE interface. There we go, find the module. There is the planet out mess state out messages. It's a vector of these. So you could have also had gravfactory.spice interface dot planet out messages square brackets zero for the first one, one for the second one, and so forth. You could have gotten those lots if you set up multiple planets. Anyway, you get the you get the picture. Attitude tracking error. We this is where we pull in the act, you know, our, our estimated body state and the reference state. Then we compute all the tracking errors of body relative to reference frame. What we're using here is actually an option. By default, there's a sigma r naught to r 
which means you go from a ref, um, an initial reference to the final reference. What's that transformation? In plain words is in the documentation you will read about the corrected body frame. We don't always wanna take a body frame B and line it up with R and then make those things coincident. Sometimes we might wanna switch and line up a different body fixed frame. Maybe there's a docking port frame, there's a sensor frame. Maybe there's a sensor platform that points in the Y direction and we want that to line up with the reference one axis, for example. You don't have to write a whole nother module. You can do it all in attitude tracking error, but you have to provide it this corrective. This is a constant attitude correction that we add to B. So here it's 010, which in MRPs is 180 degree rotation about the Y axis. So if you take your X, Y, and Z and you rotate that 180 degrees about Y, your X and Z axis are flipped signed. So we're gonna have, if this flag is thrown, you're gonna line up this corrected body frame with the R instead of the original body frame. And if you do it in Wizard in particular, it's kind of nice. You can see the frames, do their things line, do those body line up as you would expect. Anyway, so this is just a quick example on how to use this corrected body frame. Go see the documentation. Um, if you do this at tracking error, if you search for that module, it has a big description and it will talk you through these frames are not the corrected body frame. What are you specifying? You know, how does this all converge and so forth? So all that math is in there. So you can read at your heart's delight. MRP feedback. This is the same as we've used earlier in scenario attitude feedback. So it just is configured. And then I'm connecting the external force torque torque input message to the MRP feedback control torque output message. I set up all the recorders and I set up the standalone vehicle configuration message, which contains the inertia of the spacecraft uncorrupted. I subscribe that the MRP feedback needs to subscribe to that inertia message. And the rest of it is pretty standard. We run and do this. So let's see what that looks like. If I run this scenario, you can see the orientation illustration, how things actually line up IR, the dot product between these. They should all become one in the end in this default scenario, which is what we needed. And the uh, tracking error history, B relative to R, the, the rates go to zero, the control torques go to zero. And this is the norm of sigma BR. So you can see in a logarithmic scale, we are indeed actually asymptotically approaching uh, our desired reference, even though that the reference is time varying. So how does it happen? There's a feed forward part in MRP feedback where the nominal reference acceleration has to be included and hill pointing computes, given your position of velocity and assuming Keplerian motion, it computes the expected angular acceleration that your reference frame should have. So that's how we get asymptotic convergence. There's different ones we can include. If we use that alternate frame, it's gonna flip the axes. And now if we run it, you can see the orientation illustrations. We said that two of them had to be flipped here. And uh, sure enough, the, the blue IR, that's the first axis. The green stays where it is, that's plus one. The other ones, the, the blue and the, whatever that is, yellow, um, beige maybe, who knows? Um, it's gonna converge to minus one. Those two axes flipped. Um, they're signed because we used an alternate body frame, whereas we rotated about the y-axis, so the y-axis, corrected or uncorrected, is going to be the same. And that green behavior is exactly as before. So time history is slightly different, but everything still converges asymptotically as we would expect. So hope you enjoyed this quick illustration of how to use um, hill pointing. There's other ones in there like velocity pointing and so forth. You'll find scenarios key obstacle that people run into, I think, is the celestial body input message that if you don't have the bot, the space, not the spacecraft, the planet at the origin, you need to make sure you connect that input message. Um, so again, if you're looking for more info, if you go to the documentation, you will see this one is op optional, but if it's not zero, it's no longer optional, then you have to connect it. Okay. Good, hope you enjoyed it.